probe volume is a new future, so to speak, in 2023 Unity HDRP. What it does, it gives your dynamic objects that aren't being baked an ability to get lighting in a specific way. So when you go into a light area, it will have the necessary light hit on it. And when you go into darker area, he has the necessary indirect lighting happening to it. If you're familiar with probe lighting probes, you will kind of remember that when you have light probes and you have a, something that's covering about the dark area and a thin area, and it's going in there it's getting this kind of lighting quite often it stands out it looks a bit weird okay so to turn on light volume you have to go into the i believe it's the preference or wait, it's the project setting and then under the sgrp you'll have to scroll down a little bit until you can see light probe light lighting and you want to pick pro volumes and you want to pick spherical harmonics l2 if you want to go back to light probe groups you have to go in here and you have to select that on as well okay second you need to go to sgrp global settings and you have to scroll down quite a bit until you get to camera lighting and you want to turn on probe volume and normalize reflection probes sometimes you won't see one or the other settings so you have to do the reverse order okay so when that is on, you have the setting here on lighting and you should also have something called probe volumes under the lighting tab. If you're unfamiliar with that as well, you go into rendering and new lighting. In my case, the hotkeys is control nine. Okay. So under the probe volume, you can assign an environment or a single scene. I have picked a specific baking set and picked this in a scene and I put it on bake. And I've set the setting to minimum prop setting one and max prop space setting 27. Okay. To place the light prop volume, you have to go into your uh, plus sign, for example, or you can go into game objects if you need to. And under um, light prop volume, you have prop volume. So you add the prop volume and then you expand it to the range you need it or you can just say you want it to be the whole global if it's a big environment or specific scene okay i have already added my probe volume and in my probe volume i have done local and i've said i want the overall probe spacing between one meter and three meter but what does it all mean well if we go under probe volume in rendering debugger if you don't know where that is it is under Analysis and then you click on run from debugger. So I wanted to display probes. And here you can see these are all my probes at the moment. Okay. Now these probes are based on these settings. So if you change the settings, if I go this direction and under lighting tab in probe volume, I do. Um, if I go this selection, you're going to see it says problem can use a maximum of five subdivision levels. High simplification levels have a big memory overhead. They're not recommended except for testing purposes. Okay. So if I do a click save and I go into the scene, you do have to do general lighting. Now, for the same sake of uh, making things easy for the time being and quick, I'm just going to cut down all these to about super low it's going to affect the quality but that's okay then i do I'm going to do general lighting and then we should be able to notice some changes in our environment okay there you go so you can see that we have some changes in our environment it looks a bit bad that is because we have a lower setting, but as it continues to bake and finish, it should be a little bit cleaner. But even though we have quite a bit of low sampling, so it's not going to look very well. Okay. Now you can see that we have done our bake. If we go outside, you can see that the light probes are 
a bit more differently spread out in our volume. Another thing with the light probe volume is it does a pretty good job in baking and create, creating better quality volumetric fog, which is interesting. We can see that it's doing that here. But because it's probing a certain distance, it's not necessarily getting the same effect as we want. So if I go here and I move this one, you can see it's not doing a lot. Okay. So I'm going to click this, go to inspector, and I want to double check that I have baking on this area. And I want to make sure this is not being baked. Okay. I go back to my pro volume and this time I'm only going to go down here. Okay. And I'm going to go back to lighting and even though I'm going back to lighting, I'm going to reduce the quality even further to speed up our process. I'm also going to do less light pro bounds again to speed up our baking even more. And as you see, when I do this, you will also often notice that the size of the life map is reduced as well. There we go. A little bit quicker as well. Okay, you can see again, it changes the overall look of the environment because I am obviously changing how much information is being used to bake. Okay, you can see that these are the grids. And we can see them if I do display cells. So there's three of them now. Okay. You can also see bricks. These bricks tell me how much meter it is between the probes. Okay. And then we have live subdivision preview as well. These are ways to kind of understand how things are divided and organized and the distance between them. Okay. Now you can obviously notice that Okay, but where are the light probes? That's interesting. So for that, we didn't change the probe volume over here. It's still on 81 meter and probe spacing one. So I'm going to go all the way down to about nine meter. I'm going to do another quick bake. Okay. Okay, we're done now. You can see it's kind of tightening up a little bit in the area. It's not spreading out too far anymore. Now you can also notice this one is getting some shadow. And you can notice when I go in here, it's now starting to catch the necessary lighting it's supposed to catch. Okay. I'm going to click this environment one more time. I'm going to check quite deeply that it says light maps. Okay. And I'm going to make sure that the lights that I do have of the main light, the environment, has it as baked. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to change the directional light to be mixed. In fact, I'm going to the light explorer and I want to make sure that they are all going to be mixed now. And I want you to observe the changes of the environment when I do this. And keep in mind that it, the meshes are still being light baked. Okay. We're going to then do another general lighting bake. Okay. You can see it's tightening up quite a bit. It doesn't have the same effect anymore around. And then if I do debug size, you can see that it's, there's almost nothing around anymore. Okay. If I slide here though, and I kind of reveal some of the, the information, you can now see that you can see the, the probes. Okay. Now, why is this? That's obviously because we have a setting that says nine meter here, and it says a probe spacing one, and it says probe volume, we have one meter. Okay. So I'm going to go up there to one to three meter. I'm going to do not a new general lighting. Okay. And you see what happened It's spreading a bit more out. Okay. And then if we do display cell and display bricks, you can see one meter, three meter, nine meter. Okay. And you can see that the blue one, these are the three meters and inside 
we have one meter okay and now i'm going to do probes minimum probe spacing 0 0.5 to even confuse you more and i also want you to notice that the max probe spacing those amount here is changing as i change these settings too okay i'm going to do another general lighting there we go so now it's basically having very tight probe spacing and it's collecting more information from everything, okay? And when I do that, and I turn off my debug a little bit, notice that this ball is catching more of the environment, okay? Now, for the sake of a better example, we are going to go 64. 256, 124. So why is this the number I'm picking? Because obviously we don't have any environment sampling outside that takes a lot of space. So we could actually keep it at 64. We could uh, focus more on 512 here and 128 there. Gonna do max bounce um, three. Light map, we can get away with probably 10. Light map size 1000. That's fine. And then I'm going to do another bake. It's going to bake a little bit longer. And it's also going to take more texture space. Okay. And it's also going to change this look as well in the process. Okay. These are different topics for another time. But, you know, I'm showing you a little bit as we go through some of the things. So maybe you pick up a few more things besides the light probe. Okay. So you can now see that we're getting a more cleaner image right because we are giving the texture and the materials more information to work with which cleans the scene a bit more okay so we have a bit more work to work with here and i'm going to do a snippet very quickly and i'm going to snip this okay we're going to keep this here so if you do display probes you can see now that the probes are very, 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 very tightly added together. You can see that the information of this ball is getting, is pretty tight as well. Okay. You can also see that the information on this light probes are much cleaner now because we're giving it more information in the light settings. So it does affect the light probes. Okay. Which is what I wanted to show as well. The second thing is, Sometimes your um, information might be a bit unclear for whatever reason. And when you do have that, you have other ways to troubleshoot and work with your scene. So below here you have probe dilation setting and virtual offset setting. These are ways to problem solve different things that occur in your probe volume. So probe dilation is very common if you have, for example, um, a light probe somewhere and it's gathering information from inside the wall or it's giving you a hotspot somewhere that you don't want. And they tend to be quite black as well in the probes. So you can use that to kind of calculate and it will fix it. Virtual offset does the same thing. If you click, if you change the settings here, you are able to move things around the scene and change how it is being calculated, okay? For that, you need to add probe adjustment volume. And the probe adjustment volume, you should find at least one of them under here, probe adjustment volume. It gives you a shape as well. And you can then say if you want to invalidate probes, so you don't want them to be calculated. It could be in the wall or something. Or you can do an apply virtual offset with move them a little bit. And you'll see arrows that will, you can uh, move around. And you will use this mode. And then you can virtually offset things if you wanted to. So you could add a box here. And it would then kind of try and virtually offset your um, probes accordingly. Okay. And you do have to then click uh, refresh virtual offset debug. And you can then see it's pointing upwards and it's changing only this area that you've selected okay so that's what this does in case of emergency okay 
Now the probe volume override is similar, but it, you have to add an empty game object and you need to add a volume. Click new and then when you do add component, you need to add the volume like this. And then obviously you want to add an override and then you want to add in the probe. Okay. What this does is similar things. It's making sure that you're overriding the volume and the calculation that happens. So for example, on this one, if I want to put it more in, in the light and I go to my volume override and I start sliding, you can see what happens across my scene is that it's trying to give it a bit more shadow and shape to it. Okay. So if I do this, it's smoother. If I do this, it's starting to get more clear shadows. Right. So that's what this does. Now you can do different settings to get the information you need. Now, when you do do this, you have something called probe sampling and you can click select pixel and you can try and select it like say I select it here and I go back to my probe volume override so this spot is being calculated over here but if I start sliding this you can see where it's grabbing information from okay so now it's grabbing quite information from the nearest one and you can see the weight percentage on each of them that's affecting it if i turn them off you can see it's pretty much um, close to how it is if i turn off the prop volume if i do this and then i turn this on you can see now i'm taking information from somewhere else and that's if you need to debug or change the bias of it and calculation Turn it off, turn it on. You can see what happens to the environment as well, right? Okay. Now, at the moment, we are baking the scene and we have mixed. So, uh, let's turn off the display probe. Let's turn off the virtual offset. Let's turn off everything for, for the moment. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to tell the scene that, listen, I want everything in my scene to use the light pro volume. That's interesting. So what do we mean by that? Well, we want to make sure that everything in the scene, so all of these, selection over here, I'm going to select all of them very quickly right in front of you. I'm not selecting the blue one. Okay. I only want these ones. And I'm going to go from light prop to light maps. Okay. So I want you to look at the image below that some of them are light props and some of them are light maps. Okay. So if I go 100% light props, let's do that first to be a bit clear. So let's make sure everything is light probe first. for the sake of this. So I'm going to select all of them and I just want to make sure that they are all using not light maps but light probes. So what does that mean? It basically means we're using the light volume to bake our scene very quickly and kind of light our environment. And what's interesting with that is you're going to see there are some subtle differences that occurs on the scene. And we're going to use our image comparison that we took earlier. And we're going to compare the differences so we can see the pros and cons of using the light pro volume when you don't want to do light maps. So you don't have light maps. You don't have unwrap anymore. Or you don't have time for it. Or it's broken. Or you don't understand how to work around it. So that's basically what we're doing here. And for that task, we want to make sure that everything is on the light probe rather than light maps. Okay. So that's what we're doing here. I'm going to turn them all slowly but surely to detect the light probes we already been looking at for a while. And then we're going to see what happens. 
and we have to be very careful here as well okay we're going to keep the settings we have okay and what we're going to do is going to do generate lighting we want to pay attention to this window here and we're going to wait So I want you to pay attention to one thing. I didn't change the light settings and it was a very quick bake because when they use light pro volume now, it's a very quick of baking versus doing light baking on light maps. Okay, and so this compared to this, look at this. So like, look at this side and look at this side. Now look at this side and look at this side. It's not bad, okay? So you can actually do an entire scene that's being light probed now versus before you couldn't before there was a lots of problem it would there would be things that didn't look right okay so you can see it's going into the shadow it's coming out of the shadow right and it's kind of interacting with the environment without any problem you have a light source here and you can see how it goes from very bright to a bit more dim okay so if you do the list display light probes you can see there's quite a few of them participating in this environment at the moment so one thing to keep in mind when you do this kind of workflow now is one of the biggest weakness is the fact that you do lose a bit of shadow around the areas of your object i'm not sure if you noticed it but it does happen so for that you do want to consider having a little bit of um let's see it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of um, ambient occlusion uh, what is it contact shadow so that we turn off this bit they don't do much don't need the bloom at the moment <laughs> there it is Right, so if I turn that off, you can see that that this is how it looks like when you're doing your baked light probe volume. And when you do a little bit of screen space, you're getting a little bit more information. Of course, you could simply uh, adjust it accordingly as well to get what you need. So you could do like high. And if you do too much, obviously, I don't recommend that. But just a little bit enough that it there's some ambient occlusion personally i will be a bit careful doing it i'm not a very big fan of um, doing too many rays so i do dim it down a little bit so i can get the light to spread around a little bit okay you can see there is a certain difference in quality uh, when you do this kind of workflow obviously so let's turn that off for now next thing is we could also so now we can go on the light explorer and we can now do all of them just real time which we are kind of doing already anyway but let's do that okay we're gonna do another bake we shouldn't do too much Okay, so now we did a new bake and we do have not have any type of baking in terms of light. Okay, so what happens then? Obviously, you are losing a lot of information because you still need to have some bake setting on for the light probes to pick up. But you can still see that light probe volume, obviously, because everything is real time. This is how it would look like. Okay, so. The best thing to do 
generally speaking when you're doing this you could simply do baked you could do the whole environment as you need it to be so you would go in you would do sm and you will make sure that all of these are in fact set to the the bare minimum you need in terms of baking so i would probably go back to light maps because obviously it has the cleanest cleanest look to it and when you do that you will also probably notice that the volumetric light has its own life and it also reacts differently based on if you're using light probes around the map and if you're not using any light props so keep that in mind as well but it, it is definitely improves the volumetric quality to be a bit more subtle and nice looking so we're going to go back and we're going to now turn everything to light maps and while we do that we're also going to remember that when you do those kind of changes you have to rebake and you need to think carefully about the light map size why are you doing the light maps is there something going to move if it's going to move maybe you want to keep some part of it as light probe as you saw in the beginning part of my environment the, these things were actually uh, light probe while the rest was light map so now we are doing all of it to be a light mapped and we also took away part of our part of our um, setting in the lights so we don't have any lights now that's doing any uh, real time so it's all 100% baked okay and the scene is also going to be doing it as well we're going to do light maps 20 add all of it in one place do high quality generate lighting okay now pay attention to this light on the ball obviously will be changing quite drastically because now we're going back to bait and i'll move this there actually i'll keep it there because i'll show you something obviously I have uh, ambient occlusion a little bit on when I'm baking as well you can see it takes a bit longer now <clears throat> the question is do you see any difference is it worth increasing the settings too much that's a different topic altogether So you can see it's taking a bit longer. Okay, so now we baked it and I want you to pay attention to the fact that even though we baked it, our volumetric that is also baked. Okay, so normally when you do bake light and volumetric, you don't always get the same effect around your environment on the direction of your light but when you do volumetric with the light volume it has a very good calculation and cooperation with your environment okay so here you can see it's getting the shadows getting the balance it's all good and if we stretch it it's not having some weird artifact where it looks um, glowy or anything out in the darkness it's getting the necessary light that are already in the environment or somehow affecting it okay so that's the quick intro on how you can use light pro volumes and some of the pros and cons of using it and how to set it up and hopefully you uh, enjoyed it a little bit 
and if you had any more questions or if you want more in-depth version of it feel free to leave a comment or uh, anything um, I do want to point out one more thing I have only been baking I have done did not turn on my real-time global illumination to show anything so when I was doing real time and it was all dark that's because I didn't turn on real time global illumination if I had turned it on you would have seen some changes and some differences because and to do that if you were to do that test on your own you do need to make sure that you add the, the ray tracing okay and as you can see I didn't add it because <coughs> we're baking it right we're not testing uh, the other part so thanks for watching leave a positive comment like subscribe and share with other people looking to learn about these kind of things and thanks for watching